Hello, everyone. I hope you're all doing well. Um, so I record these videos about a week in advance in case there's some sort of technological disaster, which that seems to be happening as Zoom is flooded with, uh, with users right now. Uh, and so it just snowed here in South Bend, which is insult to injury, uh, given we are stuck inside and can't even go for a walk now. Uh, and I also learned how to use the change Zoom background to some awesome picture. And I decided to make this whichever movie um, I like. So you all get to see scenes from my favorite films right now. And if you feel like guessing what movies these are, feel free to shoot me an email. Uh, I thought it might be some fun distraction of what's going on. Um, it seems like a number of you have gotten a jump on the first week stuff already. That's great. Makes me very happy. And it does seem like you are working in groups, which also makes me very happy. Uh, please, please, please continue that. I, I think given how important group work and discussion was for this class in person, I'd like for that to continue online as much as possible. Uh, so this coming week, uh, the big goal, I'm looking at my additional screen over here, uh, is for you to understand the geographical and morphological variation in early and late archaic Homo sapiens. Uh, and so this is going to be kind of similar to what you did last week with various charts and a couple of different videos. Um, there are a couple of things that you should check out in the coronavirus folder. One is the paleoanthropology name help. Uh, so as I talked about before, there are many different ways of, of dealing with fossils as they are discovered and then they are named. Uh, and so paleoanthropologists or even just, you know, biological anthropologists in general, we often fall into two camps. There are the lumpers and there are the splitters. Uh, the splitters will basically give every new fossil a new species name. So you get lots and lots and lots of names. Uh, whereas the lumpers are more likely to consolidate lots of different fossils under one different species uh, because they think the differences between those fossils are due to normal variation. Like we have normal variation in populations today, in, in human populations, any population, there's variation. Uh, and so I am a lumper. Uh, but I also understand that there are lots and lots of splitters out there and then the, the, the name translation can be confusing. So I put together a document that basically tries to translate the, the splitter names into what the lumpers call them. Uh, and that's called paleoanthropology name help and it's in the overall coronavirus folder um, on our um, shared Google Drive folder right now. So please definitely have a look at that. Also, I found my old like biological anthropology coloring book um, it's so old, the pages are yellowing, so it's like older than all of you. Uh, anyway, I, you don't have to do any of this, but if you wanted some like stress relieving yet potentially educational coloring um, to help you through your social distancing, I scanned a bunch of those coloring book pages and also uploaded them to the coronavirus folder. Uh, please do as you will with them. You don't have to do anything. Um, so I might have other fun coloring things to upload later on, um, but if you have suggestions or would like something to share that I can then send out to the rest of the class, please feel free. Right, so back to the stuff for this week. Um, looking at geographical and morphological variation in early Homo sapiens, uh, and so this basically looks at as Homo erectus has become Homo sapiens and you start seeing things like Neanderthals or things that almost look like Neanderthals but are not quite Neanderthals. And then of course, um, things that look much more human, human-like. And so you're gonna be going through the different morphological features amongst them in a chart. Um, early archaic is like late Homo erectus and then late archaic is Neanderthals. And then modern day Homo sapiens or anatomically modern humans are us. And so you're gonna do a writing prompt for the readings that are assigned for this week. Um, you are also going to watch a video called Last Human Standing. And then you're gonna participate in the online Sakai forum for that. And then you're gonna work on the Archaic Homo Sapiens map and chart that is in the March 30th uh, Google Drive folder. This is a PowerPoint um, style. This was just like the one last week. So you should fill it out using PowerPoint. Uh, and if you do this in a group, feel free to save one document and each of you upload that document uh, to your own Sakai um, assignment. It really helps me for each person to turn something in so it's an easy check and go uh, rather than having to, to combine and, and you know, search out who's in what group and when. Uh, so that would be really, really helpful. Uh, please save it as a PDF when you upload it. That will save on time and save Sakai, which I'm sure is way overburdened right now as well. 
Um, so yeah, there isn't as much there. The readings, the writing prompt, the map and chart, and then watching the, uh, the video, Last Human Standing, and participating in the forum. Uh, next week, we'll talk about kind of how modern humans dispersed out of Africa um, all over, and then the different models that have been proposed for that. There will be a short mini lecture where I share my screen and you can see a PowerPoint presentation. Um, other than that, please feel free to contact me with any questions or any concerns. Uh, your book review or debunking website are due in a week. Um, trying to think what else. If there's anything else, if you just want to chat with me about something, I'm more than happy to set up an individual Zoom meeting with you. Um, yeah, I hope you're all doing well, staying safe and staying healthy. Uh, believe it or not, I really do miss being in the classroom. All right, have a good one.